Mixed light, urban light, moonlight, I've been shooting a lot of low light. And while the actual noise performance doesn't differ a lot between the Sony a7 Mark IV and Mark III, there are some major key differences and I'll explain later in the video. We'll get started by looking at the stills aspect of this comparison. I am using two of the same lens, the Sony 28mm f2. Most of these shots are going to be wide open. Most of these shots are going to be 1 1 25th of a shutter speed. And for video, it's going to be 1 uh, 50th of a shutter speed or 1 60th, somewhere around there. And the white balance is going to be auto white balance white for most of these tests because they are not controlled. This is just out and about in the field. And I want to get a better feeling of how the auto white balance behaves in these scenarios. Towards the end, we'll do some more controlled testing and a really extreme scenario of low light. Can you tell which is which? These are shots split seconds apart. There is not a whole lot of difference when it comes to the actual noise aspect. We are at 100% right here. Well, one of the noise is more magnified and that is the A7 Mark IV on the right hand side. A7 Mark III is on the left. And you can see that it does have more detail as well. Everything is just a little bit more magnified with the a7 mark IV, that includes the noise aspect of it and if your lens isn't the very sharpest you're not going to be extracting a lot more info from the lens like this one wide open but other than that this is pretty clean this is at iso 4000 next up we are at iso 6400 let's zoom into 100 percent can you tell which is which i'll give it a second and yeah off the bat one of them looks sharper than the other and that's because it's less magnified and that is the a7 mark III to the left a7 mark IV is to the right um, i can't really say that it's softer or not but it's de definitely more magnified with the a7 mark IV so you can see more of the flaws and uh, some areas look sharper some areas it's gonna look softer because the noise is going to get magnified but other than that uh, this part where there's less noise uh, there's clearly more detail uh, th these items are much bigger in the frame and when you look at the noise you can see it in the these shadow areas it is it's a little bit more prominent but it's not a lot I mean this camera is has more megapixels but it's not a ton more okay you, you have 50 percent more megapixels but the linear resolution is like 13 percent or something like that it's it's not a whole lot next up i probably can't trick you again this one is clearly more magnified and the a7 mark IV is on the right hand side it does produce a good about amount more detail you can see in the tender snack right here um, when it comes to actual noise, I can't say there's a huge difference. I mean, the noise is a little bit more magnified on the right-hand side of the A7 Mark IV. But is it a game changer? I don't really think so. They are sort of similar. And these images are at ISO 8000. So I'm, I'm trying to look for some color noise and um, you know both cameras perform pretty well can't really complain about it uh, the a7 mark iii does look sharper in some areas but it's uh, surely it does not have the same amount of detail it just appears that way because the pixels are smaller next up we'll go over some samples and see how it performs in an urban environment there are some quirks about this camera versus that camera well first off the a7 mark IV is a joy to use the lock on af tracking that is completely different from the a7 mark iii and there's a smaller item which is the iso it now displays the iso number even if you're in auto iso and that was a real pain in the butt with the a7 mark iii i'm not sure why it never displayed the iso number until well it just never did right the first sample because i do too much youtube i don't have time to get some meat at home so i have to go out and buy it yes i have to go buy my own tacos 
Hmm. And here it is. And if you notice a small little item, the A7 Mark IV, which is this one, it tends to focus on the nearest item rather than focus towards uh, the middle item. The A7 Mark III tends to focus on the middle item where the A7 Mark IV is the closest item and it's a wider field. That wide angle really is a wide angle autofocus system and whatever's closest, then that's what it locks onto. Here's another example of the A7 Mark IV attaching to the front light where the A7 Mark III simply autofocuses to the back. So that white area is no joke with the A7 Mark IV. Whatever's in that white area closest to the front, it will tend to lock and the a7 III doesn't have the same type of locking power. So if you need to focus towards the center, then you can use center zone instead. Just know that this camera works as intended. And here are a few more samples. Next up is the vlogging test in case you want to know how my lizard skin turns out. And you also get to see how it turns out when there's motion in the scene. Do you know which camera is which? Here's the reveal. And yes, I do think that the A7 Mark IV looks better. And this is using a standard profile. This is without using S-Log or anything that needs to be graded. This is straight out of the camera. It's kind of tough when you're grading night scene you know you want the best possible straight out of camera when you can with the night scene s log in itself can have some trouble more on that later so as long as you're not walking at a crazy pace i think either camera is good enough with standard stabilization but wait until i turn on active stabilization right now And this last vlogging test is for all those who have an actual soul and feel shame while vlogging in public. For those who are just trying to get it over with, how is active stave when you're rushing things? Is this good enough for you? Let me know in the comments below. Next up is the more control test. What happens if you film and log? Well, long story short, the A7 Mark IV does a terrific job while the A7 Mark III falls apart. And this is with just a basic conversion LUT from Sony. Once you're past ISO 3200, the conversion LUT just does not feel right. It just breaks apart as you can see here. The A7 Mark IV, I mean the color is well preserved. And when you're grading it past this point, it stays intact. This is because of the 10 bit color. It makes a big difference if you're going to color grade these high ISO shots. That's why I was saying previously before, try to get it right straight out of camera. If not, if you're going for a certain look, then color grading it with 10 bit and low light will make a big difference. This next section is for the users that don't fear getting snipped. Wow. Yes, APS-C and clear image zoom users. It should be pretty evident that the A7 IV files are just a little bit cleaner. This is with mixed lighting and high ISO. This is how the cameras deal with this sort of scenario. As promised in the beginning, the most extreme scenario as extreme as my kids doing their chores, <gasps> moonlit video. As you can see, both cameras struggle with autofocus. However, 
the A7 IV can't actually focus on you, while the A7 III simply gives up and it doesn't even try after a while. It's really dark and it's at its limit. This is using a Sony lens. This is not third party. Remember, we're using the Sony 28mm f2 and the a7 IV is still going at it. a7 Mark III has given up. Final thoughts. The a7 Mark IV has some distinctions compared to the a7 Mark III. Um, the practicality of this system, the color, straight off camera color is just simply better on this camera. So if you're looking for a quick workflow, there's that. And if you're looking to grade, it also has better gradeability, if that's even a word. So your grading process, if you botch the white balance, botch the color in some way, you can recover that with the gradeability of 10-bit color. It's just something that is just a lot more convenient if you're using the A7 Mark IV. Motion is a big part of video and the ability to just hand hold something and use it without needing a gimbal. It just makes it so much more convenient and in the moment that I think this camera is really next level compared to the A7 Mark III. If you're a gimbal type person, then most of what I'm saying right now is a wash. And lastly, as autofocus in low light, it's just much more reliable with the A7 Mark IV. And I was missing a lot of shots, a lot of takes. I just didn't even include in the video. Actually, I'll include some of it right in here. I had to go out and take multiple takes because I was missing so many shots. And you can't really see yourself when you're filming. But even if I was filming, um, the focus would wander off compared to like the A7 Mark IV, I could use the focus map and I could tell exactly where I should be. And that convenience factor of not having to retake a couple of shots, it's just really nice. So what do you guys think about this low light test? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.